Northern Nevada is one of the largest truck communities uh, in our nation. And with that, uh, we really wanted to bring to you the shop, the experts when it comes to trucks, gas, and diesel, and uh, make sure that we're supporting our community with the knowledge base of the best business in that segment. And I have to be on record when I say this. We're not supporting just the best business in our community, but one of the top facilities in our country. And we're really blessed. I mean, one of the uh, fantastic parts about our community is there are some extraordinary businesses. And once you find them and you see how they treat you and how they take care of you and the quality of their products and services, it's just going to change your perception of how you consume and not just in the automotive business. This business, uh, which we're talking about, Dynamic Diesel in Sparks, is an extraordinary example of what we want our community to rally behind. And with us to talk about injection and fuel systems in today's modern vehicles, we welcome Mike Robbins, their shop foreman, to our show. Mike, welcome here. Thanks, Mitch. I What I said just comes from my heart. I, I really... Uh, I can't explain in, to, in, in the, the hour that we have for this show what it, what it feels like to be able to impact the quality of products and services on a community level. It, and businesses like yours are the reason we exist, to make sure our community gets that level of quality of products and services. And I've known you personally uh, for years as well. And uh, the I, I, I've said this behind your back, so I'll say it in front of you and on uh, the uh, airwaves here, that you are one of the most skilled, uh, qualified, heavy-duty diesel technicians in our state or country. And, and that's the kind of quality of technician that uh, that they're going to get when they come to your business. And it's not just you. The whole staff there is really qualified beyond most shops, even potential Um, And I just wanted to make sure our community understands that. So we were talking a little bit about the injection systems and today's uh, modern fuel systems and how sophisticated they are. And and I really want to share with that truck owner out there that may not really understand how that technology affects them as a consumer. So let's talk about the pros of the uh, today's modern injection, uh, diesel injection systems even. Okay, Mitch, we can do that. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for the compliment and also to thank uh, as my crew as on behalf of the whole crew in the shop. We have the most cohesive group of guys we've ever had. We've got the most skill I've ever worked with. Um, we've got a group of guys down there that we can fix just about anything you can roll through our door. Um, and if we can't figure it out, we'll figure it out however we need to to make it work. Um, that being said, back to the pros. Um, now, the, the new injection systems and in all of these diesels, uh, it's, everything now is a common rail fuel injection system. Um, and thanks to the EPA and all the fed, feds getting involved with everything, we've got high-pressure fuel systems now that, that make these diesels quieter than they've ever been, makes them cleaner, makes the power output numbers higher than they've ever been. You can do more with a diesel than you ever could in the past. You don't see those big clouds of smoke coming out of some of the modern ones either. So there are some... Absolutely. They're well-monitored. The, they're nice and clean. I mean, they may not be Prius green, but they're green. And to, to, have, to have all of that is, is definitely a, a high pro. Um, but what a lot of people don't understand is there are trade-offs, and part of part of having that reliability and that that extra power and that extra all of those extra things with that comes the need for a little more stringent maintenance. Schedule. Well, you know, these are very technologically advanced, sophisticated, sensitive componentry. Absolutely, and and they're running to try to 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 eke out that last little benefit from every drop of fuel or diesel. Absolutely. And so in that process, they are so far more, more advanced, but they're also so much more sensitive. And I really want to talk about the areas that they're most sensitive in. And one of the things that you brought up is the fuel quality. Fuel quality is probably the number one, the largest uh, everyday customer-influenced uh, problem we see with vehicles. Um, fuel quality as a general broad scheme is not – the best. I mean, you can Google fuel quality standards for diesel, and there'll be pages and pages of different articles, and and all the way from the government down to just magazine articles that that talk about the different qualities of diesel fuel. Well, and I want to take that on for just a second, as far as 
you know, in the uh, gasoline engines, uh, we're, we've actually had on the show a conversation about top tier fuels, and there's things that go into those detergents and additives that and and, and lower particles of of uh, deposits in them just to start with. Exactly, the gasoline the gasoline industry, and we we see this fairly regular as well. Is the gasoline industry has done done a lot of work to make fuel quality as high as it's become. And there is a lot of good fuel quality out there to complement these gasoline vehicles and their newest, latest, greatest technologies that allow them to run as efficient and clean as they do. And the diesel market is actually just as efficient, just as technologically advanced with these the new electronic injectors and high-pressure fuel pumps and things of that nature. You've They've changed the game a lot with diesel. And in doing so, diesel fuel is still kind of playing catch-up. Um, you know, you got the new low sulfur diesel fuel so that it meets the new emission standards. But in that, they lost a lot of lubricity. You know, and we talked about that earlier. You asked me if it was even a word, and it is. It's a, it's a word that means the, the, the lubricant qualities of that particular fuel. And these new diesel systems are running just just to start most of these common rail diesel injections, the, the Duramax, the, the Cummins 6.7, the Ford 6.7 and 6.4 liter. Just to get those to start, it takes 1,200 to 1,500 PSI of fuel pressure even to get them to start. You know, at full tilt, towing your trailer up over the hill, you're probably going to hit anywhere from 25 to 28,000 PSI of fuel pressure going to those injectors. At that kind of pressure, any contaminant, a uh, little bit of rust particle, a uh, little dirt got in the fuel, a little water, lack of lubricity, those kind of things become an abrasive, and they just tear up components like your injection pump, your injectors, the fuel pressure regulators, things of that nature. So one of the things that a consumer can do to combat some of this is see if I've got this right is they can take on making sure they're using the proper diesel fuel to begin with. They can do some looking up, like you said, the internet will help them read the differences in, in diesel qualities. But you know, one of the things I think that we see a lot of is fuel prices and diesel prices are so high that what we're looking at is the board and the price, not the quality, even on fuels. Absolutely. And what I tell, you know, most customers, including my own family um, with their diesels, is that when, when you're shopping for diesel fuel and you've got your places that you go, find places that use a lot of fuel. Find places that are constantly refreshing their fuel because it sits in the tank for long periods of time. This little small gas station over here that says one diesel pump and they don't sell enough quantity to refresh that fuel tank on a regular basis. So going to places that are have a higher demand, there's a fuel station right around the sh- corner from our shop. They constantly, every morning, there's a line of trucks from f- different fleets bringing their vehicles in there to get fuel. Their fuel quality is probably going to be higher than others because they go through such a high amount. Now, that being said, you also go to a gas station, you go to a fuel station, you're on your way to work, and you see this fuel station that you pass every day, and you say, oh, I need to get fuel on the way home. Well, when you're driving by, if you see the fuel rig out there fueling the tanks, the big semi truck, the tank truck, he's there fueling the tanks. My recommendation is to stay away from that fuel station for at least 24 hours because when they dump that fuel into those tanks, all the sediment, anything that's laying at the bottom gets all stirred up, and it ends up in your fuel system. Um, the, one of our biggest, our biggest fuel system issues is people on trips. You know, they're going, they're driving down the highway. They're going from point A to point B on vacation or wherever they may go. And they stop in and they, they stop in at this little station in this, at the exit, whatever they pulled off on and they've got diesel fuel. So that's where we're going to get it. And, you know, 10 miles down the road, now my truck's acting funny. It's not running right. Something's wrong. You know, your fuel filter is doing its job, but when you dump a bunch of contaminants into the tank, it can only filter so much. They so could have it, moisture in their tank that's mm-hmm. sitting Absolutely. there. Absolutely. You know, and and that's that's part of the problem is be mindful of what you put in the tank of your truck because it does make a big difference. Well, and we're talking about I think what happens is people are going, "Well, that 5 cents per gallon, it, you know, I'm trying to minimize my expense on fuel." Um, but at the same time, uh, we're talking about potentially catastrophic repair bills Absolutely, that you would have been better off spending those few pennies more per gallon. Absolutely. Sometimes less is more. And most times with fuel, it's not. Um, so the thing I, you know, is, is watch your fuel sources real heavy. Fuel filters are one of those things that people, you know, most of the manufacturers, as you were talking earlier, most manufacturers give you a real wide range of maintenance schedule and fuel filters in, in, in what we see in our area and with our fleets that do a lot of a lot of work burning through fuel, driving around all over the place, we see it a lot. Um, fuel filters can't be changed enough. 
You know, you change those fuel filters as much as possible and additives in the tank. Well, and, and that's another thing, too. Before we get to the additives, though, I just wanted to bring up that, you know, you were talking about, you know, the, the stations that use quantity and, and not uh, having the sediments being stirred up, but also even the selection of the brand. I mean, we'll really take on, uh, our, I want our listeners to take on, and I think we'll probably even look into dedicating a show to the uh, businesses that offer the highest quality fuels in our community because this is such an important part of it. But in the interim, I'd like our consumers to actually look online, uh, do a little research about the brands that they may want to consume, that they may want to see a, uh, a national reputable company for their fuel uh, to help that. But there's also some things they can add to that. And there's a, I want to know what your take is on some of these additives. Well, additives as a general rule, if you're putting an additive in the tank trying to get more power because you know you just you just want to have more power out of your truck, you're probably looking to the wrong thing. Um, but as a general maintenance, take care of that truck, make it last you long time. You've using a use an additive like Stanadine or Redline makes some good ones. We sell Stanadine and we stand behind it. Um, it's always worked real well for us in the past, and we sell it to our customers. It's a cheap insurance. One bottle is not that expensive, and it lasts it's a few dollars. Uh, and, and, I think it's seven dollars, and it lasts two tanks worth of fuel. And, and how it makes they, a big difference? How do they get a hold of you at Dynamic Diesel and Sparks? Um, we're at two twenty Coney Island. Our phone number is seven seven five three five nine four four seven seven. We're also at dynamicdieselinc.com, and we do have a Facebook page. Please give us a call or stop on by. And see us. Thanks for joining us today, Mike. 